going live. Good morning, everybody. Are we live? <laughs> Good morning, Rachel. Good morning. Yeah, I think we're all working. We're working. Well, welcome to the to Shay Andy. Um, I wanted to share something with you guys. Um, that's um, I think a little bit different. Uh, there's the myths of um, razor cutting, and I don't know what you know about it. Some people work with it very confidently, and some people um, have I don't know a few like hang-ups about um, what's good, what's bad. Um, so I'm going to run through some uh, some questions that people have already asked. Um, we're also going to work on a let's say a simple haircut that we can just um, work through the principles. You can see I'm here representing obviously passion for hair, but also the razor company is called Donald Scott NYC. So in the collection, we have seven, uh, seven tools that we can work with that will all give different effects. So what's important to know is we're going to start, we'll start working with um, the first one, which is uh, the classic tool, which is a nine time award winning um, tool called the Donald Scott carving comb. All right. Now, some of you may have seen this before. I'll try and give you the best view right on the camera. All right. And you can see you've got some little channels that are just um, sort of left out so that it will skip and actually leave hair out. So some people, the questions that are coming through, you can give me some questions on the bottom of the sc screen on the chat box. All right. Then you've got a little question mark. All right. And that's to ask a question. All right. Maria's coming in with some. They're coming in. All right. Let me work through them. Right. They think it will make the hair fuzzy. All right. OK, let's deal with that one, because this is on my list as well. Uh, who else said that? Who else said that? Uh, Leanne said that uh, the other day. Will it make the hair fuzzy? Now, I think it depends how much that you that you whittle it down and it depends on the texture of the hair that you use it for. So the answer could be yes. If you if you keep taking the hair this way, yeah, dependent on the nature of the hair, maybe the curl, it can start to get a little bit wispy and fuzzy. So that's that's how I would describe that. But let's work, let's work through, let's have a look. Let's work through, we'll work through the questions. Uh, morning, Richard, I use a carving comb. A Paul Mitchell one, is this the same? All right, Perry, is it the same? Perry, is, it is exactly the same, but one difference, right? It doesn't say Paul Mitchell on it. All right, so those of you that were from that um, era, uh, there was a, there was a, uh, a business partnership together um, branded Paul Mitchell, but now Donald decided um, a few years ago that he would go on his own um, because he wanted to create his own his own identity and his own brand in the razor artistry world. So one of the questions before we start was, do we have to, I think it was from Richard, do we, pre, do we have to prepare the hair in, in a different way? And do we need to put anything on the hair that will help with slip? All right, so... At Donald Scott, we've got Prepare, all right, which is a liquid tool glide. But what I've also just discovered is fantastic is our new Malibu Prep Primer. So I find primer is a little stronger, but the, the Prepare you can actually put on dry hair before you straighten as well. So and I haven't used the, um, the primer for that. So we've got Prepare Liquid Tool Glide from Donald Scott or Census Taboo um, Primer. And I think if the hair is a little uh, compromised, then the primer is fantastic for this. It's all right. So, thank you, Perry. So, the question about it making it frizzy. What the first question on my list was, should you not raise a fine hair? Now, should you not? Now, I think it depends on how you, how you want to, what edge, what, what do you want to create? All right, because if you've got a really keen blade, okay, you can 
you can still cut fine hair with it if you want to soften the edge. You know, it really depends as what, what you want to create. Now, the shape here, basically, we're going to take this all short all the way under here, okay? And leave the top a little bit funky, a little bit texturized. So all the same basic things apply, but what we've got to think of is, right, if we're going to, if we're putting our, trying to get you so you can see, let's get the angles right. If you were putting your, your fingers in here, right, hang on, let's come right round, let's come right round, all right. You're there, right? If you're going to put your fingers in here and cut with scissors, you're going to cut on the outside edge here. Yeah? And when we work with a razor, we're going to have to cut on the inside edge. So all your normal, um, let's say, fundamentals of hairdressing apply. All right? I've tried to keep the hair cut really simple because I think, you know, most hairdressers, you... you you say to them, can you get me some clips? And all they've got, all they've got is like two. So let's just make it simple. All right, so we're gonna cut. We've got two sides here on this, on the carving comb, right? We've got the, uh, what I call the open side here, right? And we've got the channel side. The open side will take it off clean and the channel side on the carving comb will um, eliminate 50%. So what I mean is with the 50%, let me show you on the first section. All right, if I put it in, all right, and come out, I don't know whether you can see the separation, but it just takes that out, all right, where it's not protected. So that's what, that's, that would do that. And if you go over it multiple times, you'll take more out of the way. Okay, so let's go in. We're going to go in with our open side. All right, I'm over directing forward so you can see really what I'm trying to cut, but I'm going to use the open side here. I'm going to take the length straight off. Now, as you would, as you would with hair, no, a normal client, all right, you would take into account the hairline, the profile, uh, influencing factors, things like that, right? And see, so you can get little, little straggly bits and we can just take those off. Pinch. Yeah, it's a much looser feel. So let's carry on to the next section. And um, what, I, what I love about razor artistry is that you can, you know, it's a great time saver, really. I see a lot of people work quite, um, they do this beautiful haircut, they do it with their scissors, they create lots of precision in it, and then they spend a lot of time at the end, you know, let's say personalizing it and trying to make it soft. And this to me is like, well, why don't you just make it soft in the beginning? So, um, I think that's I think that's that's something that's really important. Um, any more questions? Any more questions? Hello, Debbie. They've always had a bad experience. Most important thing: sharpness of the blades. I think. Okay, blades. Somebody asked me the question about blades. All right now, I've been thinking about this. Right, the sharpness of a blade. How long does a blade last? All right now, these are these are new blades in here this morning. Right. I personally have I personally have two. Look, you can see this is the old one. It's a little a little faded. And what I, I actually like the feeling of an old blade. But I think going forward, uh, that the, maybe we need to sanitize them in a different way. I'm not quite sure how we how we work with those blades. I haven't got the answers yet with that. But what you what you'll get is with a fresh blade, for me, you get a much blunter edge than with an old blade right and if the let's say mature blade tends to pull the hair a little more you might need to use a little bit more of your of your um, cutting aid right you just might need to use a bit more of it because you don't want the client to feel uncomfortable and I, I personally will ask the guest you know is that pulling on your hair and I think from, from razor artistry perspective, it's really important that we're communicating with our, um, with, our, with our clients, with our guests, and saying, you know, I'm going to do this because. Because uh, some people have had a bad experience. And it's like, so the, to dispel the myths, here's the answer. 
it's not bad. Razor cutting's not bad. It's just how how the tools are being used. Um, I mean, if you go back all the, all the years, you know that I picked I picked up a few that I've um, got over the years of all different tools, right? And look at this. Look, these some of these are quite scary. I don't know who had one of those. I'm sure somebody did, right? If you had them, but this is quite popular. We used to use. You know, we used to use this. These scare me. Open blades scare me, right? And I see people using them now, and it, it sort of, I get this, I don't know, I just go a bit funny with, with when a, uh, they're trying to cut hair on their fingers with an open blade, right? I can't cut myself with this. It's impossible, all right? It's impossible. Okay, so let's carry on. Um, so blades, does it need, do they need to be fresh? I'd say, yeah, of course. But also, sometimes they're nice when they get a little bit warm. So you have to find out uh, what, what a preference that you've got to it, really. Because also, if the hair is, let's say, very compromised with our lightning services that we love to do, then, you know, we might need a little bit of a sharper blade. But this is a looser feeling. All right, one of my sort of inspiration from a hair cutter is I, I love what Vidal Sassoon brought to the industry yeah and before he came before he was he was in it right there was a guy called Teasy Weezy right somebody might be some of you might be laughing but Teasy Weezy cut everything with a razor and all of a sudden Vidal came in and um he, he put like precision in it and practice and things like this and and form and shape and you know we can um, when we get confident with um, with working with a razor with, that's got the comb on it, we can use we can use them all together. You know, we can cut hair with with the comb. We can still cut with scissors, but we might just want to soften something out. You know, but let's let's do that in take two. Right, let's let's work on it a little bit more in take two. Any questions? I remember Teasy Weezy. Right, he had a he had a big long moustache didn't he and everything was all sort of chignoned and you know Vidal came in and, and, and changed it so has that answered I think that's answered the question of blades is razor cutting wet hair detrimental to the hair from Charlotte I don't I don't think so you know we could I, I just put the thing is like if is, is highlighting detrimental to the hair? Is colouring detrimental to the hair? It all has an effect. But I think if you've got if you've got the proper tool and you want to you want to create a softer edge, oh, we're not going to micromanage it and look at it under the under the microscope to see actually the effect, because that's all a, a little bit too much detail. Um, but I think in a creative world that. Um, that's really where, where we need to what we need to think about it. And I would ask my I would ask my guests, is it something that um, is it something that would interest them a softer effect? Good question there, uh, Taylor. Is there a type of hair you would not raise up? Personally, no. Personally, no. That people say, um, what about really curly hair? Um, had a guest last week, complete, complete, hadn't seen her for like nine months and lots of lovely curls, just took it off, nice triangular shape with it. What you sometimes might find is that when you, when you, let's say you check it, that you see these little, I don't know, little fraily bits that, that you don't need. All right, I'll show you. All right, if we check in here. I don't know whether you'll, you can see it on the camera, but you might find there's a few little pieces here, all right, that, that you don't like. All right, you may have a few little, yeah, these are the little bits that could get, could look a little bit um, fuzzy, frizzy, but I don't think there's any hair that I wouldn't use it on. I might not do a full razor cut. I might cut it with precision. Right, I might cut it all with this and then go through and use the 50% channel, just go in and take it through. 
uh, one of the questions was um, how long, how far do you go up the hair shaft to create an effect? All right. So back to back to the things back to the things that you learn, and if you go right up to the root, you're going to feel like little little tufty pieces in there. So I don't think that's particularly good. And the answer to it is how far do you go up? It depends how how long the hair is, in my opinion. You know, because if it's this length hair, right, you're going to go in a centimetre, right? If it's, if it's, if the hair's longer, you might want to go in the bottom two inches once. You might want to go in from the mid down, all right? You might want to go in at an angle, all right? So it's, it's really is your choice. Let's have a look at questions. Chat moderator is on. Would you add this service to your list? Um, I personally wouldn't because it, it's, there's still misconceptions out there from the client. It's about educating them. Uh, would clients say the razor damages the hair and they would prefer scissors? What would you say? Um, I think I would say really where I'm going with this. It's like, what, what effects do you want, do you want to create? Right, I don't think that this these blades, um, when they're when they're sharp, would do less damage, you know. But then, is she is she gonna have a full head of color, and she's you know she's probably got uh, a full head platinum card color, and she's like asking me about a about a blade. Um, I think education is the key. Education is the key. So I hope that answers it, Carolina. Any more questions from the from the from the host andy we've got um <clears throat> we've got a question here from uh joe uh it says i always i was always told that razor cuts do not grow out very nicely and to use a razor every other cut okay like the question like the question here's here's what i, I agree with you 100 percent. does it grow out nicely well that's um subjective i i think that's subjective would i do it every time i i probably say if i did the did it the next time the time after that you might want to do a scissor cut because you can start almost eroding the shape too much um can you do a trim right this a linked question i think was from richard can you do a trim right so this is this one's all this one's sides all grown out the next time and you're going to cut in here and you want to take a trim is it depends what your trim's called richard mine's normally a minimum of an inch right is my trim yours might be millimeters so can you take millimeters off no i don't think so because you've got to grip it and cut it so it is more it is more difficult it is more it is more difficult do people have just razor cuts all the time? Yeah, some do. Some do. And that's, right, open side. Has that answered your question? But you can see with the fresh blade, right, it, you can actually get quite a keen edge. Look, you could probably cut that with scissors, all right? So it's actually quite accurate. And the key part that you use here is tension. All right? Tension. How often do you do I use a How often do I use a razor, Maria? Um, every day. Um, it's just something that, that I've got I've got into to offer choices. Right? And in my communication, in my consultation, it would be what sort, what sort of look do you like? You know, I'm a, I, I love, uh, Vidal Sassoon inspires me, right? The cutting head of the Vidal Sassoon way is always close by because I always refer to it. However, if they want a softer edge, I think we can follow all exactly the same fundamentals that we've all learned through different training programs, but with a different tool, we can create a different look. It's all about choice, all right? That's how I think. How do I describe it to a client, the benefit? Um, softness, texture, 
right? Do they trust you? Right, some people, I, I say to some clients, do you, you know, have you ever had a razor cut before? All right, now my, my clients, as, as we all mature, we find our clients are getting older, all right? And also what we also find is that the brushes we blow dry get smaller, all right? So we, I haven't got so many clients with hair down here. But um, they say, oh, I used to have one in the 60s, and we love it. Yeah, I haven't found anyone that can do it really well. So it's like they don't know what they don't know until you offer it, right? Some people, you know, some people go, you cut it with a razor last time, and I really didn't like it. Okay, then you go back to go back to scissors, right? But if you're if you're unconfident in working with a razor, right? We, we we need to just maybe start cutting a fringe, and you know we this is I think this is quite quick. You know we can really skirt through this and remove this hair in a real soft manner quite quickly and i know at this current moment in time we're all thinking oh my god i'm gonna to have to take longer with clients we're not going to be able to get so many in the salon yeah so speed actually isn't i don't think so important so i'm putting medium tension on here now are they going to be Lots of little loose hairs. Yeah, possibly. But this is this is about a personalised creation that you can do with your guest. Do you do a full haircut just using razors, Chloe? Yep. Yep, I'm doing one right now. I've been upping my shag game. All right. <laughs> okay, I don't really want to... Uh, let's go into that a shag okay so the shag's actually an american word for um a, an old beat out soon uh school haircut called the shake but the shake was uh deemed not to be very marketable um the the shake is a haircut that um going forward in the future when we go to when we take this into the Passion for Hair Academy, right, we're going to teach uh, a razor version of the shake, all right? So whatever you want to call it, I'm sure the shag does give you a little bit more of a, a bit more of a chuckle in these times. Um, I see, can you use the same blade for male grooming? Yes, Carly. Okay, so... Andy, we've got a quick question here um, from a while back. While back, I just want to bring it up because I think you've missed it in the chat. Um, do you always start from the front and work your way back? And that is from Lucy Owen. Okay, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Good morning. Um, I think when I think when we we have to depend on on the the shape we're going to cut. All right. Personally, for me on this, yeah, I'm going to call this for want of a better description. A round layer all right when we start a round shape we tend to start at the front in most cases all right that's probably the way we talk start at the front work your way back if i'm cutting a triangular shape yeah so shorter in the back longer in the front i'll start here all right so it just depends think about your training and use it as do exactly the same it's just a different tool all right, round shapes tend to start at the front, triangulars there, and probably squares start at the back, probably in most cases. All right. So when you get when you get to this point, if you can see that there's any, let's do a little test for yourself, right? Get, go back to get another cutting comb. Can you see the little loose areas, right? If we want to take some out of here, we can do carving comb overcome just dependent on the hair density and texture to whether we can do that right and then we just got the the channel side as we go through as we go through here all right it's just creating that soft effect as well all right 
so, and then we can do something also called surface channeling. I don't think you can it will particularly pick that up. But we can glide. Make sure you do it with the, the channel side. All right. But and you can see that it will take some hair off. All right. It's taking hair off. If I use the wrong side, if I use the open side, we'll dig a hole. All right. So um, all things to be aware of. All right. If you use the wrong side, it could get you into difficulty. All right. If you use that side and you wanted that side, you could be in trouble. And ask me how I know. That's how I learned, right? Through creating holes, peaks, peaks and troughs. You know, that's that's how I did it. Um, all right. And, and we've got a question here from Erin. Uh, when was your first time? When was your first experience with a razor, and how did you feel? Okay, my first experience was. Um, God, I'm going to go back years now, 20, 20 years ago, um, when um, about the same time as I met Debbie, I got sent one of these, right? And it didn't quite look like this. It was different. It had um, a little hinge on the top and things like that. And the first bit I cut was a fringe. All right, all right, all right. The first bit I cut was a fringe, all right? And I used, I used the channel side and went in very, very slowly, all right? And in the end, it was like you started to build up. You started to build up confidence, right? But so it was, it was almost Debbie, I won't say she introduced it to us, but it was the start when Donald Scott was working with Paul Mitchell and we had an artistic team and it was playing with the tools and things like that. So... For me, there's there's the there's the underneath, right? That's dry. Now, if we want to take these little pieces off, we can. And there's a funny story, right? Sometimes, right, when we're working, we've got all our tools laid out, haven't we? All laid out on our styling station. And some clients like to like fluff up their own hair, don't they? And put their own touches on it. So one day we were we were working away in the salon and I finished I finished the guest and she'd gone um, I'd gone up to the reception um, and what she'd done when she when I walked away to 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 the reception she picked up a comb all right so she what she thought was a blow dryer it was quite long so what she wanted to do is she wanted to back comb right the, the <laughs> back comb her hair. Right, just a little bit on the root, just through the parting. Right, and she was natural level three with like a really lovely white line. Right. Anyway, she came she came downstairs from the um, from the toilets, going like this in reception. Andy, what have you done? My hair's coming out. Right, and you should <laughs> you shouldn't laugh, but I knew what she'd done. She picked up the carving comb to back comb the root, and she back combed it with the open side, right? And the hair was just coming out in, in like, in pieces. And like, she's like, what can I do? I went, well, you're gonna have to grow it out and don't touch my tools again. It's like, it was crazy. It was crazy, but, um, so the moral of the story is don't let your, uh, leave your tools laying around. Also, if, if you have children in your salon, let's let's be mindful of, of them picking them up. But, you know, you can't, you can't cut fingers with, with with the with the carving comb right any let's have a look at questions oh my god i don't think that's very helpful <laughs> okay sally Ann saying she loves using razor on longer lengths what was really what was really good if we go if we go back i don't know 15 20 years ago there was a program um oh god it's gone now there was a program friends Right, and the Jennifer Aniston haircut where it was all soft around the front, right? And people were, tr were trying to spend a lot of time with their, with their scissors, trying to get that face frame in layer, and it was taking ages, and they were trying to point cut it. And the easy thing really was just to go straight through and, you know, cut it. You can go all the front, you can go from short to long, all the way through in one go, and it's done, ta-da. Right, one go in, 
yeah? Because sometimes we can't, we can't turn our wrists on one side and then we can turn it on the other. So what I would say is, right, that's, that's the soft, that's the basis, that's the undercut part. Um, I'm just gonna dry that one off. Right, any questions, let's have a look, let's have a look. Um, on the neckline, if you wanted to taper and make this slightly okay. shorter, could you use this tool against the neck? So, questions, questions. Um, there was a question from Charlotte, another question which says, what is the ideal section size? All right, the question was from... Um, Charlotte, optimum section size. At this moment, I would say, you know your stuff, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you've got very fine hair, you're probably gonna use less sections. If you've got uh, a mass of hair, you're gonna use finer sections. Do it exactly the same. At this stage, we'll keep it simple. Don't try and change the way you cut hair, just change the tool. All right, so I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the top down. All right, all I've done here, right, is a real basic horseshoe section. All right, center pine horseshoe section. Now, if you wanted to have it, um, let's say asymmetric, you could change this part. All right, I've just tried to keep it really, really simple. But right, this mannequin's got quite a lot of hair. So we're going to use the same tool. Andy, got Any a question. Uh, on, on the neckline, if you wanted to taper and make this slightly shorter, could you use this tool against the neck? Yeah. Yeah, back to, okay, back to the neckline. If you wanted to take, hang on, I'm going the wrong way. Yes, you could taper it in. You could taper it, just go in more. I'd go with the open side. But yes is the answer, and you can just take more away. All right, so yes is the answer. It's really a, a tool, a tool that you need to, I think, play with, right? You need to play with it on mannequins. Um, sorry, who had another question? Would you use any brand of razor blades that fit your tool? Personally, I wouldn't. All right, there, there are these, these, the the Donald Scott ones are designed to fit in here perfectly. All right, they are they are designed to go together. Right, they are a little more expensive, but they're diamond edge cut, which means they will last you longer. All right, I know there's cheaper ones around, but what I've tried is one the fit isn't very good and they move right in the in there. And also, what you need to think about is if you're using a um, a prepare tool. Whichever one you choose, all right, it's going to prolong the life of your blades. All right, so diamond cut, is, they're going to last longer. Right, when we, move, when we move into another tool, we've got a chopstick, a chopstick pro. Maybe we'll cut the, we'll cut the other side uh, with, with that. I'm just going to go through with this, with this one. Well, I'll show you about blades. But, so if you're using another brand, they tend not to work together so well um that's quite a common one so i hope that answers that one what about using the razor to thin hair through okay let's deal with that let's deal with that who asked that question sophia what brand do you use hang on there's loads of questions all right thin hair Channel side. Go through once. All right? You'll take that amount off. All right? If you go through more, if you can get in there. If you go through more and you keep going, and you stop. Right. It really depends how far you want to go with it. It's your it's your call. It's your call. 
But let me cut this side. So we're gonna we're gonna work from we've already got the undercut through here. All right, and we're gonna work a triangular shape now. So from the questions earlier, I think it was Lucy said about the front, which was a round layer, right? Now we're gonna go in and do a little bit more of a triangular mm, graduation, one lengthy sort of thing. All right, so we're gonna start at the back and work forward where we wanna leave some length. So we're gonna over direct back. So we do a diagonal forward section. Right, now you, you've got to use your own uh, expertise to think of length. I want it to be a little bit disconnected. So I'm going to go from short to long at the front, all right, with the open side. But right? if you want to check it for little pieces, all right, do it. All right, another centimetre section. Over direct back to the previous. goes in one, right? Now, dependent on how long you want the front, it's dependent on how far you over direct back. What brand? How much, Andy? And where do I get them from? I need a new razor. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, where do you get them from? <laughs> Me. Okay, if anybody wants any of these tools, um, I have a website, which is... Um, uk.donaldscottnyc.com but you know you can get me on messenger but i can i can ship them out to you so short to long all right pretty quick huh so at the moment, we're still pretty much one length and we'll work through the top in a minute and I can just help you with some techniques with that. All right, so now we've got work to the other side. So you can see we've been using, we've been using the, the, the classic carving comb and I've just showed you a chopstick. So let's show you the chopstick pro. We do another we do the other side with it missed over with some prepare or some primer whatever you I don't I don't mind I think the more the more fragile hair the primer is has a little bit more uh, moisture content in it all right so what we need when we're going to work with the chopstick pro we we haven't got any um, any protected areas all right, this is this is one of my favourite tools, and it hasn't got a comb on it, so we need to work with a regular comb. All right, but the, what we're going to do is going to be exactly the same. Take a piece from your, yeah, that's a, the clue from the other side. Diagonal forward section. And just edge the same 45 degrees going forward this is a 45 degrees but you can all still see when would you use the chopstick over other razors do you for or do a carving comb boo they don't they don't do a carving comb but Andy does, or Donald Scott does. I think the answer to Charlotte's, when would you use a chopstick over other razors? I think it's, it's personal preference, Charlotte. I think maybe the chopstick, some people prefer a chopstick because they can, they can still use their, their regular comb with it. All right, but... Depends whether you, it, to me it doesn't make any difference, all right. But you may you may want to do that edge with that, but you could do it with that. It's 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 what do people what effect do they want, all right? And if I do it with if I do this with the comb, if I put too much pressure on here, right, I'm going to take away too much hair, 
So I hope that's answered the question. This is very much a working with a razor is is a very I call it like a feely tool. You have to get um, to uh, understand what it can do, and the only way you can understand it is by picking it up and using it, and preferably probably on a mannequin first. I would recommend because you can you, you know you can make your mistakes, you can make your learning. Um, and all the all the details of the of, of the tool really come into its own. All right, so we're pretty much we're pretty much there with the shape. Let's just come back and look at questions, right? Passion for hair, thank you. They put the link on there. Um, thank you, Daniel. Um, Charlotte, you can have a go with mine. I blimmin' love it. <laughs> okay. So, right, next bit, next bit, next bit, next bit. Right, what then comes to happen? Right, so we've cut the shape in here. We've got disconnections on the underneath. Now we've got, because it's near enough all one length, we should have two guidelines, which you know if you pull them right up, you're probably going to get a point. All right? So if you want to reduce that point, how are you going to do that? All right? There's two, there's a couple of ways, but let me show you. Let's see if the point's there first. Right, there's the point. So if we're using if we're using a chopstick pro, right, we're just gonna we're just gonna pinch cut. So we're gonna put our thumb in, we're gonna trap the hair between our thumb, right? We can't cut ourselves, right? And we're just gonna twist it forward. Right? Can you see the edge? Right, it's quite strong. Alright. The other option that we have, don't want to confuse anybody. I just want to show you the difference All right we've still got the point okay we can go back to the carving cone the regular carving cone and we can we can do a side to side motion all right just bend arch your fingers slightly because if you get the if you get the teeth of the comb stuck up your nail uh, you'll know about it all right, but you can see you get a much more softer look on that one than if you go in and pinch. All right, that would be more accurate. So now you're starting to see the difference between the tools and what effects you can get. All right, but we've got loads of different um, cutting techniques. Boo, are you using a wide or a fine tooth? Boo, I'm using a regular fine tooth. All right? She's getting ahead of me. If you look at the picture here, right, here's a, this is a wide tooth for less tension. This one here, the silver one. All right? And the one I've been using is the fine tooth. All right, for more tension. So maybe with the, with the curly hair that you thought maybe you couldn't raise a, and you're happy to have a little bit less tension, the wide tooth would be would be better. All right, but you know, you 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 have to you have to find what what works the best. Um hope we got that one. Um I always struggle razor cutting the layers on top. Thank you, Jay. I always change back to scissors. All right, Jay. Is is this helping? It's the chopstick part, yeah. Because with a, if you've got if you've got a razor like this, right, you can't do this because what's going to happen? Blood, right? We can't we can't do that, right? But with the chopstick pro, yeah, with the serrations, I think you can see that there. All right, you can't cut yourself. All right, if you go up and down it, you will because it will have a saw in motion. So if you're going to do the layers on the top, you can do you can just pinch carve. So actually, it's put the right. You can see the 
jaggedy, right? If you want it to be jagged, side to side motion, all right, we'll still keep it a little bit fluffy. If you want something that's quite accurate, then I go, that works, doesn't it? So I hope that's done that one. What kind of, what kind of, I use another kind of razor, not sure what it's called. Okay. Uh, one from Aston Fincher, right? The, <clears throat> just, just to give you, there's so many, everybody has a razor tool. All right. Everybody's trying to sell one. Some are really, some are really, really, this is quite popular. Something like this. Right. At Donald Scott, we've got a collection of, a collection of tools that would suit everything. All right, so we've got um, fine tooth, all right, wide tooth, all right, chopstick pro. All right, we've also got another one I'll grab. This is great for guys. We've got one called a swivel twist, all right. Finger in, and it turns all the way around, all right. So what's that for? Right, the channels only take away twenty five percent. All right, so so it, it cuts less away. All right, I'll show you if you can see. I'll go really close. If you can see, the the edge here is slightly beveled. All right, so that fits the head shape. All right, remember twenty five percent all of it. Let me show you. All right, if I want to take some weight over the top out this way. Right, I can twenty five percent. Right, it's taking her away. Right, with one swoop you can only take twenty five percent. Right, if you want to switch it over to the other side, you just turn it in your fingers. Right, but then if I go in here, right, and put too much pressure on, what will I create? A hole. Right. Um, tell Pandy, please make your comments, comments below. Uh, hang on, guys. Yeah. No, we don't want, no, we don't want holes, Marcus, do we? But, you know, the way that, the way that you learn about, you know, you don't want holes is sometimes to, to create holes. All right. And you can, you can, once you feel the tension on the blade, you'll know, you'll get it, you'll get it. And you, and you do it without even, without even thinking you can take weight away. Right, where do I want to remove weight? All right, where do I want to remove it? So it is you really have to get the you really have to get the feel for it. Now, one of the questions is, can you? Um, or one of the myths I think is, can you can you do um, can you do razor cutting on dry hair? Of course you can. Of course you can. It will feel different to the to the client. Right, any more questions? Who's going? Andy, we had a we had one a little bit earlier. Um, Did I miss would, you, it? would you sanitize slash clean after every use uh, on the blades? I think. Okay, that's that's a that is that is a really great a really great question, right? In in the world we're in now, here I will share my thoughts. I will share my thoughts. Is that even if you don't have to, even if you don't have, um, even if you don't want to put in a new blade, right? What I would suggest is that the blades, mm -mm -mm, some new blades, right, are out are out of the tool with the tool on the side because this is what's going to happen, right? Maybe you have a little tray with some cling film on, you know, like a like a tattoo artist has that um, he puts his inks on, right? Because this is where it's going, I think, right? And then your sanitizer would be that, even if you're not putting, even if you're not putting a new blade in, um, yeah, it would be great, wouldn't it? It's a new blade, but you know, come and get real. And then you put the blades in in front of the client, right? I think that's the way that that will go, just the way as your, you know, your scissors will. Um, God, there's lots of different things being spoken about the way we work. It's going to be like one client. Are we going to be working like like a doctor one to one? But let's not go into all that now because there's too many. Andy, would you say it's better using a razor on wet hair? 
Um, I'd use it on both quite confidently. Um, I think that uh, the myths are, oh, it will rip the hair. All right. Let me get, let me get, let me get this dry, and I'll work with some. Um, I'll work with. Um, we'll show you a few uh, razor cutting on um, dry hair. If that's all right. If you cut with a razor blade, would you be able to use the same blade again? Yeah, I think you pretty would. Yeah, would you say it's better using a razor on wet hair? I'm just going to dry that off. Daniel, if you want to throw me some questions, because I'm going to dry, and I can hear what you're saying. I'll try and look out. If you cut, your, if you cut yourself with the razor blade, oh, if you cut yourself with, oh, sorry, if you cut yourself with the razor blade, uh, no. <laughs> no. Changing the blades in a, uh, in, in a mode really easy. Once you know it, you'll, you'll do it with your eyes shut. Uh, it's the blade, there's always a risk. Uh, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to flat wrap with our Siemenson uh, airbrush. What did you use to sanitise your blade? Um, what did I use? Water. Because <laughs> I'm at home. Right? Um, in the salon, we, we normally we have a detox spray. That's what we that's what we personally use. But I think there's going to be. Um, I've also got a sanitizer for clippers, which is like a heavier oil, but that's that's for a, for a different blade. Um, uh, detox spray, but you can't get that at the moment. There's like none left. So how many average cuts you get with one blade? Um, I think if I said, if you use, if you're going to do total haircuts, I would say three, probably from one blade. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you, you just do partial bits. It might be just a spring, so it's hard to say how long. But I think I would say three, yeah, three haircuts would be right for me. Um, a little bit of tension on there. Could you use barbicide as a spray and sanitizer? Uh, yes. Is the answer to that? Oh, I'm sure barbicide. I've got a question uh, from Alex Thomas um, in Alex. regards to um, first timers. Would you say the carving comb is best? Is the best razor for a uh, first time user? Um, okay, I'm going to say yes. But the bark comes if you if you're confident to put your comb down all right because what a lot what a lot of people will do is they're so used to having the comb separately right i've seen if i've seen people do it like this that they're going like they're doing that because they're not using that but yes is the answer to your question but you just got to get used to like not throwing it away but just letting go of that part of your normal um, tool regime, whatever you want to call it. So thanks for the question. Um, see if I've got any more uh, wet or dry hair. We're going through that. Cutting aid done it. Uh, who else? Alex, hope you've answered that. How, have we covered the, uh, the barbicide question, Andy? Uh, apologies if we had. Uh, could you use barbicide as a spray to sanitize, or will this affect the blades? Definitely, barbicide. Um, I think barbicide is probably going to bring a lot more products out probably in the future. Um, the only, the only, the only trouble that I saw with when when we used like a barbicide, um, let's say the jar, right, is that in the past it's probably infrequently changed. All right, I'm trying to put this politely, and actually, you're probably putting into something that's dirtier than whatever tool is you're going to put 
you were going to put into it. It's probably dirtier. So, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure whether the jar thing works for the future, but I think that there will be more sprays. And I'm sure I've seen already the manufacturers are making sanitizers um, to help. Um, uh, I know Malibu C are, are make, have made one for first line responders, but I think there will be things that you will be able to buy um, in salons from wholesalers. They'll all have them and things like that. I'm sure Passion for Hair are looking into um, the, the most cost effective hand sanitizer. We use made for blade. We use made for the blade. Okay. All right. We use salon side. All right. There, there's quite a lot of different sprays. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Because they're they're gonna they're gonna be what what people are looking for, you know. I'm gonna be looking for sanitizers. You know, I'm sure Euphoria are on it. Um, I know other brands that we work with. Are, I've already done it in the in the US because they had lots of um, lots of um, supplies of uh, raw ingredients. Yeah, there was already a lot of activity, I'm sure. So there's lots of things that I think we, we're, we're not sure of the answers yet and how it's going to work, but um, blade sanitation will be important. Um, I don't know whether the, the shaving market will go away. Um, and I'm sure manufacturers will even be looking at face masks and you know, gloves and bloody bloody gloves, right? It's close there. Any more questions before we go into the dry relationship? We're about an hour in, so we're all caught up on questions. Has anyone got any uh, fresh questions, guys? Anybody got any questions? We covered quite a lot. We've covered quite a lot. Okay, so. Just a quick, a quick dry. I think you can sort of see the shape. Right now, she is going to be coloured. She, she was the client that's come in after um, three months of isolation with a faded red. Um, unfortunately, she didn't go with my recommendation to take some um, far fire conditioner home. So um, we're going to colour her. Um, and we'll show you her again. Um, I'll post it on the um, on our group. All right. So dry hair. What's my favourite tool? What's my favourite tool on dry hair? Um, we got lots to choose from, haven't we? Personally, I like. Before you head over to dry hair, Andy, just uh, Richard's got a question. Does the wet styling product make a difference in how the razor feels on the hair? Does, does the wet, I'll just reread it again. Um, does the wet styling product make a difference on how? Okay, so all, all I've used today, if this helps the answer, Richard, is I, I, I cut with primer. I also love using smooth. I probably would have put some smooth on as well. All right, and it just gives, just whatever the hair needs, whether you're a census a Euphora or whatever other brands you've got in your salon, I would say something to smooth the cuticle down. All right, there's lots of different choices out there. Uh, super skinny serum, uh, Moroccan oil treatment oil, and blah, 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 right? Whatever you've got, right? But I think we're, we're really focusing on um, sensors from a taboo. Um, um, what's, the, what's the Euphora one? Um, something balm. I right, can't think of the name, right? But um, it's like, how, how can you, how does it work? How does it feel, Richard? She feels, she feels good. She could have more product on there, I think, you know, because that's what we do. But um, for the sense of this um, demonstration, I think the primer's enough. Love Andy, it. Andy, we've got, does this razor pull on dry hair? Okay. Well, I'm going to say you. it will create more tension. Well, I'm just going to do some, so it will create more tension. The best way to learn, guys, 
is ask your client, right? Because she, she's not going to answer me back, is she? Right? I'm just going to say, how does that feel? Right? But I, I know that I can actually, let's go back to prepare, which is the Donald Scott one, right? That I can spray this onto dry hair to help slip and it dries perfectly and it's also got a heat protection in it for when I, for when I straighten it. All right, so the finishing part of it, I know I'm safe with this. So if that answers the question, you can just miss that on. I think the, the primer may be a little too strong. All right. So now we're gonna we're gonna work on, on a pencil carve, and if we want to take make a few more hollows in it or a bit more space, let's see if I can get it so you can see it. All right. Now for me. I can either use the, the protection of that, hang on, the protection of that, right, to take away 50%. Uh, I can use the protection of the swivel twist to take away 25%. Or if I want to be, let's say, creative and have more say in it, right, I can just create some space by pencil carving in, right. If I want to make wider channels, I can just pencil that out and comb it away. All right. And Andy, would you say um, razor in is quicker than uh, a scissor cut, or does it vary depending on what you're doing? That was from Jay. I would say that you can. It will reduce your time by half. Would be my would be my suggestion. You know, most people tend to get them out on a, to get them out on a Saturday, don't they? Get their razors out on a Saturday afternoon because they want to go and do what they want to do. Yeah, they want to finish the end of the week. Um, so back in with the pencil carve. All right, we can go one, two, three, four. How much? Look, I put quite a lot of pressure on the on the last two, and you take it out a little bit. You're taking it out a little bit deeper. So this is, this is, I'd say, more creative. But then I'd say the carving comb is safer because it only takes the hair out the, the gaps. All right. What dialogue would you mean communicating the clients to how to manage the hair whilst they can't have it cut? Whoa. What advice would I give to why they can't have it cut? God, that's a difficult one, isn't it? I think if you can give them advice to how to help them maintain it and make them feel better about it, then that's all well and good. However, all right, I have had messages of clients that have already said, Andy, I've cut my fringe, I've had to cut some off the back. I think as long as we're there to give them some, um, like let's say a shoulder to cry on, it's useful. Um, I think, you know, there's been lots and lots of talk about colour and stuff, but let's not do that one. How would you convince a client that a razor cut is for them when they have reservations from a previous experience? That's a, that's a lovely question. How, how would I... Right, the first thing is... Right? I'm quite confident I can tell them that I'm an expert. Right? And I can tell them, right? But, but to actually show them what the tool does... Right, this will do this, this will do that, this is this, this is that, right? Because education is the way that people build confidence in you. When you go and see a doctor and he explains it, you, you, you start to be a little at ease with it, all right? So I just think that you want to, it's like practice the dialogue, all right? What's the benefits going to be to the client? Yeah, is it going to make them manage it better because of their texture of hair? I'm not trying to give you the you know, how to do your consultation, but it's just um, what's the main cut in wet or dry? Would you convince a client that a razor is for them and their uh, experience? Right? What's the difference? I think Leanne, what you what you will do is you you can pre-cut it. And then you blow dry it and then you you look into hair, you look through it and see 
where does it need more taken away? All right. Sometimes you can only see that factor on dry hair. All right. Does it pull a little more? Yes, it does. But, you know, you'll get the feeling for it. Right. Answering the questions is difficult because you need to see it. And I think when we get into the academy and we've got, I don't know, let's say 10 people, we can all share experiences and feeling and showing what each tool can do. So I think a, a class would be uh, would be really good. Is there any type of hair you wouldn't raise it? No. Um, right. I think I'm going to leave that with the haircut. Got a good question here, Andy, uh, yeah. from Sophia. Uh, what angle would you use when you're, when you're doing this? Um, what angle would you go in at? I think she means. That's a good, that's a good question. I probably didn't touch on it. All right. The, to get to get traction through the hair, I would just say just go with forty five degrees to start. All right. When you when you get the feeling of that, then you might want to change it. All right. Now the change comes in when you've got a um, a swivel twist. Right. I can change it. All right. My fingers are in control. All right. The previous model of this had a fixed. I'm going to say a fixed twist like that and you couldn't move it right what people said was oh sometimes i want to change it so the tool was like redesigned so it had a it had that function on it so some of you might have and i used to make pink ones and stuff like that so some of you might have had that so i think that's a um would you raise it extensions um that's that's really good <clears throat> Charlotte, I'd say I'm not I'm not an expense, extension specialist, right? It's not my bag. If you look on the main donaldscottnyc.com website, I'm pretty sure there's tutorials to cut extensions. All right, so hopefully that's the answer. I don't know the answers to that. Not my bag. I'm just going to pass it on. Andy, Ruth is asking, uh, is there a way I can cut with the razor that gives volume? Yeah, okay, Ruth. <laughs> She's back. She's back. Okay, so if you want to create volume, Ruth, 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 not quite sure which Ruth, but okay. So if you put if you put shorter hair into longer hair, I think we all understand that it will give it it will give it support. Is that all cool? Yeah? Okay, so how will we get it? Um, let's go with um, a carving comb. Right, we can do something called a teasy carve. So we can hold it up like that. And we can, with the channel side, right, we can go, we push it down. Right. Now this is really clean hair without a lot of product on it. Right. And what it will do is it will start to tease the root without cutting like i've still not cut anything all right so we tease and then when we've got as much hair as we want to protect at the bottom we can then go up and take some hair out all right then when we comb it out we've still got left the length all right so then we get something so what we have now we have the support of the shorter hair in here uh, 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 uh up all right we've taken some of that out which then gives us some shorter hair on the inside so that's how you get more get more with that just be careful make sure you do it with the right with the, with the channel side if you go in with the open side and you cut in short you could have a little like tufty piece all right but all these things are like tricks and tips of things that i've done over the years and now do it without a lot of, let's say, a lot of thought because I've got it. All right. But if you want to do it, it's, it's teasy carve. All right. Right. Any more questions? We've been now. Uh, and we've, we've got one here, Andy. Um, so if we decided that we wanted to try it on a haircut for the first time uh, in just one area to build confidence, where would you advise and what? So that was from Marcus. All right, Marcus. I'm going to. I'm going to pull the chair up because there might be a few questions. All right, Marcus. So here was here would be my 
the way I did it, right, which was 20 odd years ago, was to, um, with a carving comb, client comes in, because we offer free fringe trims, don't we, right, and she wants it, um, what did the client say, she wants it choppy, all right, you with me on this, and it was just to maybe take some, put some choppiness in on the fringe with the channel side, all right, not that side, all right, that's the, that's the next time you do it, all right, so you just go in and you pull it down and you start to see some choppiness, all right, when we do, when we do a class, all right, we start off with, um, what we're going to do, we're going to do our, um, we're going to do our shake class, all right, when we do the shake class, the first thing we do is we take off excess length, all right? But then we'll do that with the, with the open side. So if the mannequin's long, we just say, okay, let's cut a square line all the way around with that, all right? So maybe start on a mannequin first, but on a person, I'd say a little bit of fringe work, all right? But you just got to build up confidence. Any more questions? Any more questions before we close it? We've had a few questions, um, Andy, in regards to will, will we be doing a, a razor cutting technique course uh, at P4H Academy? I uh, just want to cover that and let everybody know that when we get uh, through the other side of this, um, what's going on at the minute, we are we are um, we are planning to do um, a razor cutting course in the academy with Andy, uh, and we'll get details out as soon as we can. Uh, with that, guys. So um, just bear with us, and we'll get the details out uh, ASAP. The, dis the, discuss the discussions have been in um, sort of in progress. Uh, Debbie's spoken a few times about um, phase two of the education. Now, I think like everything, everything's sort of been put on pause because phase one actually hasn't completed yet. Um, so I think due to uh, um, let's say for people, the call for um, learning these these fun techniques um, are definitely something that a passion for hair academy. We've got the ideal um, set up for everybody, for people in the passion for hair family to to come and see with it, work with it, um, play with the tools, have some fun cutting hair again because that's really important. Um, so I'd just like to say thank you for the. I think we had ninety nine people. We had needed to get one more to sell out. Which is maybe Declan, maybe we got to the thousand. We got to, we certainly did get to the hundred registered. We got over, we got 104 registered. So, okay. um, Four thank numbers. you. Sorry. Then 104. So, I'd like to say on behalf of uh, Donald Scott NYC, uh, the website is uk.donaldscottnyc.com. Oh, yeah, so nice. Anybody wants to tools? I have full supply left, right? Unfortunately, they come out of New York and getting stuff out of New York is not great at the moment, as you can appreciate. So I can do a few bits. Um, thank you to Debbie, Daniel, Declan, Passion for Hair, all the lovely customers. Uh, stay safe, everybody. Uh, access. We'll probably be all ready to go back. We might be this, but we'll be, I call clever buggers, if I can say that. Thank you very much. Have a great day um yeah thanks andy it's been uh it's been it's been brilliant um thank you thank you all to andy uh thank you all for joining us and uh, don't forget we do have uh debbie's business bites a rerun of what she done earlier on in the week if you missed that uh sign up that's at 3 p.m today um so stay safe everyone have a good day and i'm sure we'll uh, we'll all check in together a little bit later on cheers guys thank you